So now we're presenting the books of the same city. I did Okie dokie. Y'all ready? Okay, thank you. Let me make sure this is going. All right, it's looking good. All right, 2703 Olympia Drive for 144 in Missouri City, Courtney Hall. Thirteen three nineteen bed sold oh. drive for a million. Excuse me, a million. One ninety <laughs> Frank. Only one ninety. Oh yeah. yeah. So it's a cute little <laughs> home uh, in uh, Meisterwood. It's uh, three bedroom two. A lot of updates that uh, the client is now done. Fresh paint, granite. Uh, just some really interesting things. It's a perfect home for a first time buyer. We listed yesterday. Have two contracts. Two. Wow. Excuse me. Two uh, offers. Wow. Wow. Great job. Where's this? Where is it? It's uh, in Meisterwood, which is basically 1960. That's super cute. Really cute. Good job. 1841 Marshall Street, Unit 7 for 198500 Josh Green. Eighty-five fifteen Braysdale Lane, two fifty, <coughs> Tim Shanahan in Bray's Oaks Market Area. One zero six one four Hillcroft Street, two sixty eight Terry Kaminsky, in West Ferry. Seventy four ten Dearborn Street for two seventy five Nassim Sawyer in Spring Branch. Ninety-four thirty-one Fannin for two ninety-nine nine hundred. Paul Silverman, the Medical Center. He and Beverly and Turk, y'all did so great on the MS one hundred and fifty. That was so awesome. That is so awesome. You finished? Oh yeah. Good. Yeah. Great. Good. Hey, you started us. Yeah, you started. <laughs> 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 More than most of the stuff. Yeah. 1210 well done. Two zero one zero Gustave Cook Lane. Three hundred four thousand. Sorry, three hundred four thousand five hundred. Deanne Gates and Veranda. Six zero four seven Wickton Drive, three hundred fifty nine thousand nine hundred in Maplewood South. All Silverman. Busy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Cork 
corn or wood corn? I'm not sure. I think it's wood. Twenty-eight one thirty-one Long Mill Lane, three hundred eighty-nine thousand in Cross Creek Ranch, Ranch and Katie Rosemary. Oopsies, I carried away. That's okay. Twenty-one oh seven Francis for three ninety-two Cindy Burns, University area. Five oh six Lillian Street for four fifteen Stephen Morrell and Rice Military <coughs> for Washington Corridor. <coughs> Two thirty one Sutherland Square for four twenty Golfton Market Area, Nancy Stowe. Forty thirty one Bellefontaine Street for four twenty five in Bracewood Place, Margaret Benson. Can we get the company to do some lifestyle things like this? She, 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 she makes them. She makes them. Five thousand and five Hidalgo Street, Unit two hundred nine, from four forty five in the Empire Condos. Donna Wilson. Okay, this is a, a mid rise, um, right across from the water wall. This is great because it's one story, and it's on uh, the bottom floor, which is number two. It has a double terrace <coughs> and um, high high ceilings. Mostly hardwoods, but a little bit of uh, carpet. It's a two bedroom, two bath, and low, low maintenance fee, seven eighty a month. Do they have those columns? Yeah, yeah the, the, those columns are you know they're in every one of the units. That one, um, the columns are only in the living room, and they're full canvas. Gorgeous resort style pool. You can exit the back of the property and be at the lakes of Post Oak, and on the front you overlook the um, Williams Water. It's huge. Yeah. 709 Asbury Street, 559 800 in Rice Military, Vicki Barazande. Mm -hmm. 
5418 Lacey Street, Unit A for 620 in Rice Military, Cindy this Green. This is the house that I talked about last week. Yeah, I see it. Thank you. Oh, pretty. It's a, it's, this is a great, I don't think this will last very long at 620. Um, it's just, it's there were only two houses built like this in Rice Military, so you won't see this in Fort Wayne anywhere else. Oh, yes, it is. What was the question? What was the question? Is it single family? Yes, single family. <laughs> is there an elevator or elevator taking? There's no, there's no elevator. That's the master. There are three balconies on each one on each floor. They all have glass and metal railings. Pretty. Okay. Very cool. Really nice house. Nice. Nice. 1111 11 Studewood Street, 639 900, Unit 601, Houston Heights, Julia Neal. Oh, I love that bird. It's, like, <coughs> it's a fine place. I was just there this weekend. And the rooftop pool they have, the view is stunning. So stunning. cool. That is cool. Great call. Yeah, the only thing I'm talking about is a very high HOA. How much is that? Like Better not have an out of town bar. Look at that shower window. Because why not? Because why not? Oh, wow, that is cool. Wow. That is pretty cool. Dark area. Yeah, Floyd Street, Unit B for 649 Rice Military Washington Corridor, Thomas Clappy. Ready. Seventy one oh six Alton Drive, six fifty nine Spring Branch, Susan Boss. That's nice. Very cute. Forty four nineteen Laurel Drive for six ninety eight nine fifty Riverside Terrace, David Atkins. Fifteen twenty nine Winrock Boulevard for seven twenty five and Briar Grove Con Trussell. Hmm. What is that? What's the street? Winrock, but I'm thinking that's not necessarily Briar Grove. So we'll pull it. Yeah. Yeah, Village at Woodway Square. So it's in the Briar Grove yeah. Market area. Yeah, my bad. He need to change it for some photo, too. 507 Anchorage Lane, 748 Energy Corridor, Sandy Parker.
4075 Merrick Street, 750,000 Bracewood Place, Margaret Benson. It's a cute chalkboard. In their kitchen? Uh, you know, like we're going to have above the breakfast. No. Oh, cute. We're going to have a chalk wall <laughs> in our diner. Who was that field? I will go back and look. I'm thinking in the 60s, 60s, 60s <laughs> with the green four by fours. Yeah. Let's see. 51. I was going to say 50s. Mm -hmm. 438 West 26th Street, 759 500 in the greater Houston Heights, Ron Espinosa. <laughs> FYI, they're saying dusk shots are getting more traffic than day shots these days. Might want to keep that in mind with your photography. And sometimes the photographer can <coughs> engage the primary photo as a dusk shot. Oh. Well, we charge you a whole lot more, so that would be good to know. Yeah. They're going up on the prices too. Now they're charging for editing. Twenty six twenty seven Meadow Lark Hills Court for seven seventy nine since spring Klein Lisa Marshall. This is a really lovely family home. It is butts up to a nature preserve there on the right. So if you look like through the court, you can see all you see is um, the woods and everything. It has six bedrooms. Wow. Anyway, oh, at one room they mirrored and put ballet bars up so it could be an exercise studio or um, meditation, you know, whatever you want to use it for. Game room, media room, it's it's just got everything. It uh, freshly painted, beautiful floors, living wood floors, ready to go. <clears throat> right across from the Exxon campus, you can walk. If you work for Exxon, you can walk to work. <laughs> it's really a nice, nice. Oh, see all that? Oh, that's that's great. Yeah. Robin, could you go back to Laura a little bit? I, I missed it by 30 seconds. Uh, sorry, no. No, I'm not going to happen. This one? Yes. A little bit yes. more than 30 seconds. What? Ah. <laughs> You've got 15 seconds. Go. Okay. Um, so this was done by my contractor, Craig Christie. It was a complete gut. They purchased it two years ago. 1950s ranch, 12,500 square foot lot, 3,000 wow. square foot house. If you go on MLS and look at the before and after, it's sick. Um, Milgard windows, <laughs> R19 isoning spray from insulation, um, blue onyx quartzite um, counters, Acacia wood floors, western door window systems, four inch recess cans. It's just amazing. What was that? It's the other side it? terrace. The other side of 288. <laughs> On the other side of 288. We have multiple offers. Oh, wow. But it is <laughs> fantastic. If you have anyone who wants yard space, um, very, pretty. very safe. It is a Rice professor who lives there now. He was on campus. Um, they did all of this, spent three hundred fifty thousand. They bought it for four fifteen. He's just offered a position to back on the Rice, so he's going to take a hundred thousand dollars loss. Oh, wow. um, he loves teaching more than his house. Um, but Fernando did all the cabinets. All the hinges are soft close, of course, but the railings are blues, so they're Look underneath they and hidden, so you don't see it. You get an extra half inch of storage space per drawer. Truly extraordinary. Very cool. I love that blue tile. Yeah. And now let me figure out where are we are. <clears throat> we're further down. Laurel, Laurel, Laurel. All right, yeah, we did that. Villanova Street. 
So 4120 Villanova Street for 858 in the West University Southside area. And this is Vicki Barzande. Is, this law? is that law? Yes. I don't think so. Yes. yes. <laughs> so this is a 6,600 square foot lot. 12226 Beauregard Drive, 899 in Crosswood, Inga. Um, okay, guys, this is a must see. Um, just a little fun fact, our very own Robin Connor was the previous listing agent um, and when these people bought it. Um, my clients came in and put in the hardwood floors, they updated the master um, bath, the ensuite. The, um, the great thing about this home is the layout. You have two bedrooms downstairs, two baths, of course one's ensuite and then a nice hall bath and you have a, um, a half bath in the um, mudroom area. Uh, neighborhood lore tells me that this was the um, model home for the neighborhood when it first started. It's a block over from Frostwood Elementary, so you have the park there and, um, you know, obviously great schools, Frostwood Memorial Middle and Memorial High School. This picture here, Robin, can you pop back just a second? This is um, the secondary downstairs, and you can see it has like that little alcove in the back, which has been ideal for a little play area for um, their son. But you know, obviously, it could be just a great sitting area. I mean, just a lot of options here to the home's layout. Now, that's one of the two upstairs bedrooms, really generously sized, and this is the hall bath that they share. And if you can see right here, you have this nice little dressing area. So. If you have two people getting ready at the same time, um, especially teenagers, that would be ideal. Good size lot, just under 10,000 square feet. You could easily put a pool in there. Yeah, um, you know, my client put in the electronic uh, iron gate, that kind of thing. So it is ready to go. How close was flooding? Excuse me? How close was the flooding? Uh, not close at all. Flooding was further south down on Gaston. So this home did not flood. Be holding it open Thursday? Um, I think I will. I had it this past uh, Sunday, which was the first showings, and uh, we had a lot of traffic. 4139 Villa Fontaine Street for 900 in Bracewood Place, Margaret Vincent. 3002 Mid Lane Unit A for 975 in Royden Oaks, Afton Oaks area. Kelly, let's see, there's no shot, so it's a soft contemporary. Get to get the photos. 4035 Underwood Street for 800 in Braisewood Place, Stormy Hayes. This is Ayrshire. <laughs> Zero Beach Nut Street for 1.1 and a leaf. A uh, little over an acre, 48,918 Rama. Raw land, all utilities available along Beach Nut. 204 foot frontage. There's the location. Twenty-three twenty-six Bissonette for a million two seventy-four Greenbrier Parcel in the Rice Museum District. Mike Spear. Okay, this is one more six uh, by Scott Fraser Home. Silver Home. Um, actually, three are pending already, but they are moving. Uh, 
have a rooftop terrace. They all oh, that's have a pretty garden. Garden. Yeah. 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 Is that a, a closed in porch? No, no, it's just cut dry. Oh, wow, it looks like a sun. It's an open terrace. Wow. Some have downtown really views, amazing. some have gallery of views. Yep. Yeah. Third level with all master suite and study. Wow, all that's a good point. Nice How much is it? Is there an elevator? I uh, have an elevator for vision. Yes, that's the shop. Yeah. 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 Very nice. There's another one, twenty three thirty bisonette. This one's a million two ninety nine. And there are three different floor plans over there. Um, yeah. and each one does have a yard and it's large enough for a little cocktail pool. And there's actually two, four, six, eight built-in parking spaces for people in cars. Eight built-in parking spaces? Yeah. Like, so is that a gated community? It's going to be gated. Yeah, yep. it's not up yet. This one's nicely we'll safe. close on the first one, which will be gated right now. And then two of them are staged. Six ten Shady Wood Road, a million three forty nine in Tanglewood, Ruthie Porterfield. So relist. Relist. The original home was flooded in Harvey and was torn down. The builder came in and built this home two and a half feet above the 500 year flood line. It's priced at a million six forty five. It is five bedrooms, six and a half baths, two stories, <coughs> designed by Sullivan Henry Ozera. Uh, Ozera Architects, yes. Uh, wine room, mud room, dining room, kitchen open to a huge family room with walls of glass and a huge covered deck with an outdoor fireplace. There is room for a future summer kitchen. It's not in there yet. The upstairs has three bedrooms, a game room, and all bedrooms are en suite. Hardwoods, cathedral ceilings, really a pretty home. Right. <coughs> 
6504 Suwanee Avenue, million six ninety five West University Place, Lisa Bear. Mm, this looks pretty. Eight eighty nine Country Lane, a million seven ninety five in Hunters Creek, Kevin Stokes. This is the property I mentioned. Uh, last week, it was so this is a full lot, the end of country lane. So we do side to the big wall that's there along the feeder, but there's plenty of, I mean, as you can see, large trees and whatnot, so you can see part of the wall there. But it's a full acre, it's a 5,000 square foot home on the property. A builder or someone who wants a project. Go in and redo it or tear it down and do something. Is somebody living in it now, Kevin? No, nobody's living. Okay. 12103 Beauregard for 2.1 <laughs> Memorial Forest, Karen Harper. Okay, this is beautiful recent construction. It was completed in May of 2017, so two years old. So I can, that's a virtually staged living room through the entry to the dining room, family room with a brick wall. There is a game room, that's the game room on the first floor, which is unusual. The fifth bedroom is on the first floor. That's the master, which is up. And uh, the master closet is insane. That's the uh, patio, back patio that is virtually staged, dining room not staged. Uh, these are not in the order I have them. I wonder how they got this order, it's weird. Uh, kitchen, breakfast, family room, real open with the beams. Those, the your furniture that you virtually stage that with, who did that for you? It looks good. I don't remember the name of the company. Oh, that's really good. It really yeah, looks good. they do a great job. I think it, I don't know. We I'll usually use it. spotless. Sometimes. Yeah, it could be that one. Spotless. We used to. Yeah. That's the fifth bedroom that's down. That's the bathroom, ensuite bath for the fifth bedroom, which is down. There's a butler's pantry, mudroom, and then a home office. That's a little home office. So that's one of the bedrooms upstairs with built-in. There's a Hollywood bath. That's one of your vanities, the shared part of the bath, and then one of the other bedroom. That bedroom has a private bath, closet for that bedroom, and the private bath for that bedroom. That's a master bath. I don't know how these got out of order. That's also the master bath, and then the master closet. Wow. Check it out. <laughs> I mean, my gosh, this oh, thing is 19 by 13. This closet's wow. like the size of a normal bed. Yeah, it's so gigantic. Cool. That's the laundry room, which is also very big and pretty. Uh, summer <laughs> kitchen. That's the patio on stage. <laughs> Two million one. Two million one. It was built by McCollum. McCollum's got a couple of new constructions going on, very similar that are. Two three fifty. We want to be under that. Eleven three oh six Jamestown for two point three. Uh, let's see. I believe this, this is, is a new lot. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Thirty five thousand square feet. Some pictures on it soon. <laughs> one one four Hickory Ridge. Uh, two million six fifty on Hickory Ridge over in the Memorial area. Patty Garrison. Over an acre. The Great Street. Beautiful street. Great Street. Incredible lot. Incredible lot. See, look at that outdoor area. Yeah, look at that. Exterior on this one is just done. Like, yeah, it's all that outdoor. It's the biggest one. <coughs> 58 inch. huge. I'll go back, but I'm pretty sure it's like 55, 58. Yeah, I toured it when it was um, a non MLS. Me and it, um, I mean, the interior obviously needs a little bit of tweaking, but the, the property and the, the land itself and the outdoor living space is phenomenal. Yes, and the entrance is just beautiful. 53. Yeah, and that circular drive is when you're closer to the home, is 
doubled, you know, double width. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you can like park, oh, yeah, so and you still drive, drive you know, Yeah. And then you have a porta cache going through. I mean, I'd be all over that thing. Twenty six sixteen Fenwood Road for. Oh, look at that price. Yeah, we've had a price reduction on that slide. <laughs> 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 Significant. I think we had a, uh, this was a, a $285 million price reduction steal. It's a steal. <laughs> you can get a deal on the home. <laughs> New construction, Smith Family Homes, Moss no, Studio Architects. Um, downstairs study has a full bath, so it's ready to be a downstairs bedroom. We've had a lot of requests for a downstairs bedroom. It is elevator capable. It's on a 7,500 square foot lot on Finwood. Finwood's a one-way street, only going east. Um, the house to the right is a, um, it has a house and the lot on Kirby. So this is the third lot, but it's the second house. Um, but you have the price of only one way. It'll be finished probably six weeks. And the builder asked me to put it online prematurely. <laughs> All right. One one nine point broad oaks or two point nine Kelly Geithner. We're busy taking pictures this week. This is a custom home in Point Broad Oaks. Where is that? It's right off the Broad Road. Yeah, yeah. Right off it's a gate community. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty two oh four Troon for three million six fifty River Oaks Walter Bearing. Um, this is going to be open today, and uh, it really shows me that she's a decorator and just has stamped it out. It's, it is one of those houses that's uh, ready to go. It's uh, just has nicely updated. It's Pretty. a corner lot. Uh, oh, nice lot. Left. And uh, it has five or six bedrooms. It has a three car garage. Um, it, you know, it's an older River Oaks home that has been you know, yeah, it's it's nice. updated to the current standards. So, uh, it's going to be about 12 to the day and take a look. Uh, uh, your check. It's, uh, <coughs> this one, it's a lot of bedrooms. Mm. One bedroom is optional quarters. Oh, I love this old one. It's nice. Nice photos. Yeah. Yeah. Really nicely done. Back up to six. Sorry? Sorry? <laughs> Back to the third. You said this took up really. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably storage it. underneath it. Walter, are you getting showings on it? Well, well, it just went in. So, it's the debut. Walter, did you have three different photographers? No, same one. You just read it. Okay. Wow. Oh, this is going to sell. That. That's cute, Walter. It's it's really cute. This looks. Oh. It shows. Uh, really cute. Oh, well, it shows. Well, it's well, 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 all right, right. Yeah. we have one more. 6107 Stilson Branch Lane for 300 in Pinemont Square. This is Brandon Newton's new listing. No, this one's over in Pinemont. All righty. Okay, hang on. Okay. Okay, who ate breakfast? Kate and Spank. Thank you, thank you, thank you for breakfast. Come on up. Let me get the lights for you. There you go. Thank you very much for bringing breakfast. Oh, guys. Are you got your uh, seat belts buckled for the summer? Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be going to be a ride. If, if March and April are any indication, we're going to be really, really busy this summer. And, uh, anticipating that, we've beefed up a couple of our products. So one that I'd like to tell you about today is the Early Professional. Uh, the Early Professional doctors, attorneys, 
engineers, so on and so forth. Uh, used to cap out at a million for 100% financing. We have moved that to 1.5 because we had a lot of demand for a lot of 1.2s and 1.3s. And you almost need the one five to get well, and uh, true. bless you. you that's know? true. And, and a lot of these, yeah. the, the loan is designed for people who are making good money, just haven't been making it long enough to accumulate any. So if you ask a brand new doctor to come up with 300K, it's not going to happen. So we uh, we changed it to accommodate those people. Also, if, if that particular attorney or doctor happens to be in excess of five years, outside of residency slash fellowship, we now have a 5% program, 5% down program for them, also to 1.5 million. And 10%, we, we go to two. So uh, that will accommodate a lot of people and should help you with your, with your summer sales. We also have our, our CRA loan, and we're doing a lot in Edo and Spring Branch, you know, four, four fifty. So if any of you want some of that low hanging fruit, we don't really have any competition. Uh, hundred percent and rate in the fours, but very low closing costs. Wow. So I'm gonna have Colt come up and explain it more because he does about a million of these every month, it seems like. Okay, twenty third. But it seems like a million to him. <laughs> Colt Colt Badger will talk to you about that. Bobby's coming up. Tell us what is going. You're wrapped that land that was torn down in the Georgian apartments. Are you in that bank? Are you? No. Okay. Which bank are you in? I, I'm over. I'm actually over in uh, Tanglewood. Is where my where our office. Okay. Does anyone know what the Georgian apartments are? It's a developer out of Dallas, and they're putting in apartments that are going to be luxury apartments. Because by that he means they're going to have an extra half bath in them, and they're going to have hotel numbers. Okay, you know what? Will you come tell Martha afterwards? Thank you. Go ahead. Let's hear about this. <laughs> if I could close thirty a month, I'd be a little bit happier. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll be working after two, three years. Um, as y'all know, for only limit forty four. Well, this CRI program, we go all the way up to 44 at 100%, as long as we're in a low to moderate income area, because that's going to be my income limits for these people. Now, I don't have income limits if we're in certain areas. That's my low to moderate. But just based off the agenda, y'all got three, six, seven of y'all's properties are in my areas where I can do zero down. I'm going to take one. 6231 Sutherland Square. I've got Nancy. So I've got your car listing up right here. <laughs> Now, I'm going to tell you the difference between going with us at zero down and going with anybody else at five percent down. Average these days is about uh, first time home buyer seven to ten percent down. That's all over. So if we put MI in their loan and they put five percent down, they're going to be paying four hundred and twenty dollars a month in mortgage insurance, so they get that equity. With our loan, we don't have MI. You're going to save four hundred and twenty dollars a month. Zero down, those taxes would probably be around 10 grand in closing cost altogether, but compared to just 5% down, we're saving boogers of money. And we tell those people, put your zero down. You don't have to be a first time home buyer, you just can't own another home. Get in this place at 10 grand, brand new house. Um, I do EO all day long, I do 400s, 420s, 450s. I can do 500 if they put a little bit down, 4.375% interest rate. But 3% down, you get an eighth off of your checking year account. Fit. 30 year fix, yes ma'am. No origination fee. It's gonna wow. save you four grand. And you get a four point three seven five. Wow, that's good. I'm telling you. So we've done a few with uh, a couple of agents in here. We wanted to grow and expand more and more. I'm all over the place with my map. If you want information, <laughs> grab your favorite loan officer or come to me. I got about sixty cards out there waiting for y'all, and I'll send y'all a policy map. One day we'll put it up here and you'll see all over Harris County. We do Fort Bend, Harris, Montgomery, and if you're out in San Antonio and Bear. But we really concentrate on that east side myself because there's a lot of townhomes out there at 420, 440, 450. These new guys coming in want to live right next to downtown, and we get them in real quick and easy. Perfect. Do you know Jonathan? Yes, ma'am. I've closed about five or six with Jonathan. Uh, Sarah Goodner, we're doing four together right now. Um, I work with builders as hard as I can. Y'all are my in with builders. Y'all want to just we'll go to lunch, play a little golf, do something. So, right. and you've got your card though. Yes, ma'am. Lots of cards, lots of emails. Have any questions. I'm just thinking of my nephew who's, you know, going to start looking for his first 
Now, these kids right out of college, as long as they have good credit history, they at least have credit history, we're going to go. We can use it. J O B S. Now, don't well, bring me is a J O B. If he's got a salary job, don't 1099s that have four months on it and come to me saying, I'm going to get a while and I go, here's my friend Drew. He can help you out too. Here's my friend Drew. Just new construction or not? New construction, existing. It can be a seven year old house, doesn't matter to me as long as it, you know. As long as the borrower qualifies, they can be anywhere that's in a low to moderate income area. Now, here's the thing we get $200,000 houses, and they can be in an upper income area. As long as my borrower makes less than 60 grand, we can still do it. But we typically find people making you know, 70, 80, 100, 100, and something, and we get them in these higher income houses. This really is for those people that don't have the cash. It's just like one of the professional, and they, they make enough money, though, that they can afford the payments. So I got people at 12% debt to income, they owe. 20 grand in the bank account, so they just can't put everything down. Um, 4.375 are conforming rates for a four and a quarter, one and eight. So we're right there with no MI. You try to get somebody a 650 credit score into one of these programs, they're going to be a 5%, 5.5% interest rate, and MI. So we're doing a pretty good job here. Yeah, that's good. Jonathan gave him a shout out on the live stream saying that he does a great job with the loans. Thank you. Yeah. There's a lot of houses in Spring Branch. I've got one with Paul right yes, now in Spring Branch. I do a lot of I do I do Pulte, I do Lenar, I do KB, and they're all up in that 77080 area, right up in Spring Branch. I just did one for my little brother, which I didn't do. One of the other loan officers did. I just kind of looked in on it now and then. He just closed the Meritage. They have a huge community going on that golf course right off Gessner. And we're trying to roll with those guys. So incentives, incentives. Wow, that's good. That's right. Awesome. Zero get, percent down. Thank you. Down. Thank get you. your favorite one off. Thank you for breakfast. We really Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jenny. I'm sorry. I asked Jenny to come up here. Jenny, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> you don't know this probably, but you have been here five years. <laughs> done for five years and they have sent you and oh, wow. we are giving you all this stuff don't let anybody come in your office and eat your candy <laughs> <laughs> you know they can go in my office and eat the easter candy that's still there <laughs> but there is for five oh, years we could yeah. not do it without jenny oh, wow. <laughs> Is it important? I asked her to come up here and she said, is it important? I've got somebody who needs an emergency PMA. And so she was doing that. So now we're probably you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so here you go. Thank oh, you. Thank Congratulations. You Bye. Awesome. Bye. We have two new agents. Misty DeVore has joined the Bay Area office. She lives in the Friendswood area and she is already busy out there doing open houses. Jennifer Lerner, is Jennifer here? Yeah, I'm here. There you are. Yeah. Raise your hand. Hello. There she is. Jennifer's had her license for many years and is moving from one field to another. She lives in Bel Air. There you go, Headley. Here's another Bel Air person for you. And we'll be working from our office. Jennifer, we're glad you're here. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Wherever you are out there, we're glad you're here. I'll see you. Yes. 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 Oh, we're in here. Oh, Missy, stand up. I'm sorry. Look, you drove all the way in. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Um, we have one more. Yep, I just wanted to talk about uh, one more employee. Every year when the year ends, we look back at our employees and we always want to pick an employee of the year from our 50 plus eligible employees here. I always find it super hard because I think we have so many good, strong people that work for you here. So this year we looked at it a little bit differently. <clears throat> we always try to preach community and being on boards and things like that. So we looked internally and said, okay, who of our employees has either joined boards or joined community groups and everything? And uh, one person stood out. And so I had to bring up my sheet so I could keep track of all the boards that this person's on. Number one, we started a program last year here called Project Elevate. And that's, uh, it's led by Stephanie Cleary. But there were six employees on that team. And they actually built this whole curriculum to try to help keep customer service in front of all of the staff. So when we're working with you and working together, 
Um, it, it's just something that we can do more. So this person was on that team. This person also joined Executive Women's International and, uh, and became the chair of philanthropy all in about the last year. Um, organized a blanket drive here, which was excellent. This person then also volunteered to be the main person of iThrive, which is also on the employee side, it's for healthcare. It involved tracking steps and doing all these other programs. And this person also being a former armed forces lady is part of Operation Gratitude. If you remember, collected all the Halloween candy for all the troops that we then sent overseas. So if everyone could please congratulate the Sika Cox. <laughs> Which is nice, but more importantly, it comes with a gift card, oh, which sold right. big four, and also a signed letter from Philip White, oh, the CEO. Wow. So thank, thank you for so everything much. that you did. Yeah. Do I have to say anything? I'm just really, really grateful. I didn't do any of the things that I say is for me right here. I'm really surprised. So thank you very much. I'm going to be here, and I've grown a lot from every experience. So. <laughs> okay, we're going to start in one minute, but we were talking yesterday in the management meeting, and I just want to point this out to you, mainly because I just got out of sitting in champion school all day long taking the broker responsibility <laughs> course. Y'all have y'all ever taken it? Taken it? You really do learn a lot, but it is long, long, long. One of the things they talk so much about, and Tess has taken it, and she said the same thing in her class, is commingling funds. We don't commingle funds. I mean, surely no one in here takes somebody's check and puts it in their household account that they use every day. I, I, I'm assuming, you know, but they say never assume anything. So, but what has happened is so many buyers and sellers with all these apps that are out there now, there's Venmo, there's Zelle, where you can literally go on your phone and say, send so-and-so $500 or $1,000 or $1,500. And people are doing it for option fees. And I think that is fine if it's between the buyer and the seller, but it's not going through the agent. I just want y'all, every time you're dealing with money, think about yourself. What is a jury going to think when you say, oh yeah, it went in my account, but I immediately wrote them a check for it. But it went in your personal account. What is that called? Oh, oh, man. Man. <laughs> y'all, you're going to lose your license. Ugh. So please be careful. If a buyer and seller want to give each other money through their uh, uh, Zelle account, you know, or Venmo, whatever they want, that's fine. That's between the buyer and seller. Please step back. The agents don't need to be involved in getting money. We can take a check and I can put it in my escrow account here, which is my desk drawer that's right in front of me in my, in my desk. But it's not going into my Chase account for me to go spend at, you know, Dillard's. Yes, ma'am. Just last week I had a client that doesn't have to check it. Doesn't have a checkbook. He doesn't have a checkbook. And then he's this is the third one I've come across. Millennials with that checkbook. So he gave me $150 cash. So I put it in an envelope and took it to his corner. But he gave it to me first. Is that well, a, that's a, it's not like giving you a check if he's yeah. giving you the cash. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's all right. But you didn't put it in I your bank account. That, that's that where they're getting Sorry, people is. People are giving money to their, the agents are putting it in their bank account. One woman went in and borrowed a little money because she had some expenses to pay. And she went in and borrowed some money. And out of her, she actually did have a trust account for real estate. 
but she was kind of a little low on cash. So she went in and borrowed money. Can you believe that? And then she eventually did pay it back, and she just didn't understand why the judge uh, took away her license for four years. <laughs> you know, it's kind of amazing, isn't it? I mean, in that instance, I would say go to the bank and get a cashier's check. Because now when you have to receipt the option fee, how are you going to receipt a Venmo or a Zelle or whatever? Well, when in, on the receipt where you say, you know, where it has to be of, signed, yeah. in the form of, you say transfer from buyer to seller. But if I was representing the seller, I would get something in writing that said, I have received $500 from Joe Blow who wrote me. Yeah. It, I mean, it they does. send you an email. They yeah. absolutely yeah. send an email. That's true. Yeah. Get it in writing from an email. I need a receipt. Yeah, you get it in writing. Yes, ma'am. What if it's the other way? What if my client the other day was out of town on spring break, and so I, I went and if, if I went and cut a check myself to the option to put and then they just reimburse me later. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I know, I know y'all have. I, I, we all have, you know. It's not like they're giving us the money and then we're cutting a check, right? I mean, it's the yeah. other way around. So I would imagine that's okay. Well, yeah, you know, it's kind of, yeah, so, right. well, he <laughs> could <laughs> have given, <laughs> through Venmo or Zell, done well, what's, what's the answer? Frank, I don't know the answer. Transfer that money. It's real sticky. I'm telling you, I can't answer that. And I don't know. And you don't know what the jury's going to say either. But he could have gone on. He's out of town. Let me tell you how easy it is to do Zelle. I have a Chase account. My nephew in California has a Wells Fargo account. And I'm paying his college tuition. It is so easy for me to go into my chase, say, send this much money to him. And I mean, within minutes, he has it in his account. It's there. Z E L L E. And that's it, Chase, Wells Fargo, a lot of the, most bank of the America. big bank, bank of everybody, you know. But, and then there's Venmo. We've all heard of Venmo. Yeah. But it is so easy. So your buyer in that instance could have. Send it straight to the seller. I wish they'd make it a little bit harder to send money through your phone, but they don't. Um, but anyway, I'm just throwing that out. Y'all, please, please, please be careful. Do not commingle funds. Um, it needs to be between the buyer and seller. You know? Okay? What about for repairs? Repairs. Like give an example. I'm meeting my contractor to replace the kitchen sink, and she's at work, and I give the plumber $150 for the service call. Well, I think it's a third party. You're not paying the a party to the contract. Okay. You are paying a third party entity, you know, for a service. You didn't take that expense. Yeah. That's hard. If you wanted to be kind enough to buy that sink on your own, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. expensive. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, here we go. How to increase your business. You ready? Girls. Can everyone see or should I turn the lights down? <laughs> pretty, pretty little images we've got going on here. How's that? Good for everybody. All right, so referrals, referrals, referrals. The easiest money you can make, right? Who spends two cent an outgoing referral this week? I know Jennifer Dent's been a lot busier than that, so I encourage you guys to think about that. So um, when we're thinking about referrals, do you want me to be in it? Let me just control my, control my destiny over here. My communication on the line. <laughs> my band is texting. Um, normally the millennials do that. Okay, right. so your sphere isn't referring business as a favor to you. They're referring business because of you. Does anyone ever feel like, gosh, I just don't want to ask for that referral because I feel like I'm bugging people? Yeah. Yes? It's ours. So, but that's not why people want to refer. Out of the goodness of their heart, they think that you're a great professional. They think that they're great at what you do, and they want to help you. Truly and honestly, they do. Um, and then there's one thing 
that no other agent can take away from you, and that's the relationships that you've built with your clients. So I know that, that there's a lot of realtors out there, there's a lot of competition going on right now, and you think, gosh, why did that person call me for their referral to over here? They're my client, they're my friend, they're my family, or hopefully not. But um, you have to stay in front of, <laughs> or, or hopefully, we're not sure. Um, you have to stay in front of the clients uh, to make sure that you are putting out there that you're ready to refer them wherever they need to go. Because they're not going to think of you if you're not putting yourselves in front of them. Right? So some of the conversations that you're having with your clients right now, you're just out there, you're doing your cocktail chatter, um, you're doing your talk, um, tailor your calls, your texts, your emails to match what they're saying. So you pick up on a certain... Um, thing that they're saying, they're talking about, you know, the end of the year, or they're talking about coming up on their summer vacations, or they're talking about, you know, saving some money to fix up whatever it is um, in their in their home. Think about those things, and then maybe think of an email mailer or a resora that you can send out that would be specifically tailored to that, so that you're on point, you're on what is going on, what's trending in their mind, in the client's mind, um, and then that way you can stay on top of mind and promote your business. Right? So some of the things that I'm thinking of that may be going on right now um, in some of these conversations that you can tailor your marketing to would be college acceptance. Anyone who's out there who's got people that are getting those college acceptance, hey, Mr. and Mrs., have you ever thought about purchasing a home in that college town so that you're not paying rent you know that your child's staying in a good place? You can get their roommates to pay you guys rent. I know a ton of people that are doing that. We're seeing that all the time of people that are wanting to go invest in those college towns because the university is so popular, and then it's an, it's an investment for them as a client, right? Summer vacation. You really love going to, I'm going to use 38 because I feel like everyone goes to 38 uh, that I'm seeing on Facebook. You really love going to 38 every summer. Have you ever considered looking at a home for sale while you're there, right? So I know a ton of agents here are calling us when their clients are getting on the plane going to their vacations, which is fabulous, right? Because we can work really fast and really hard. It's very helpful if you give us just a little bit of lead time to be able to pick that right agent and give the other broker some time to make sure that they're giving you a good match. Like someone who's coming in here, if they call when they're getting on the plane, we don't have realtors just sitting up on, you know, lined up on a couch ready to go like a retail store. You know, we have schedules, we have clients, we have inspections, we have photographs, we have everything that's going on to, so to make that correct referral please give us enough time to, to make that happen. But when you're hearing someone going on vacation, that should be something that you can think about. Maybe send them some listings just saying, hey, you know, if you're out driving around, this is what's for sale. And who knows where that will lead. Sweat equity projects. Look at this great deal. Look at these fixer-uppers in your neighborhood. Have you ever thought about investing in your own neighborhood? These are some great deals that you can think of. So those are just examples that I'm thinking of now. Um, SPF 100, your SOI. So who, who, who can remember what it looks like when you're putting some SPF 100 on, either on yourself or on your clients or your kids? I mean, hopefully you're not putting SPF 100 on your clients. Um, <laughs> but basically you're slathering them, right? You're, you're coating it on so that they don't get burned. So being the knowledge agent for your marketplace. So sending things out, um, the great transfer of wealth, tax strategies and real estate, real estate investment opportunities. Find some articles, find some literature that you think would be helpful to your clients. Put it in your resort and send it out to them. So what you're doing is you feel like you're protecting them, right? Because you're making them knowledgeable about what's going on in your business, but then you're also staying in front of them, right? So that when they're thinking anything about real estate, they've got your contact information. They remember that you sent them that really important thing that made a difference and in, in, you know, was kind of an educational read for real estate because everybody's asking about real estate. Everybody that you go, what's going on in real estate? What are some of the things that you talk about? Not that you know everybody's busy, that's great, but that doesn't really give them something to hold on to. Okay, so now I'm gonna encourage everyone to go out and create a network within their Sotheby's, um, their Sotheby's people, right? Sotheby's agents, who here is going to g &E? Great, right, perfect. We hope that all of you go to GE, right? I think it's really important. Um, we appreciate when you guys come to our department and say, hey, this is my client, this is my situation. We want you to go to the other Sotheby's and pick the perfect match agent. We are happy to, to do that. We do it every single day. We know that that's an advantage to you to be making sure that you have the right match for your client. 
But I also think it's important for incoming business, for people who are coming to Houston, for you to have a relationship with somebody and hopefully several people that you could say, oh, by the way, if you're buying or selling a home or you had a client buying or selling a home in Houston, do you have a realtor that you would refer them to? Yes, no. I mean, if it's yes, great, grand. Here's my contact information anyway. If it's no, perfect. I'd love to talk to you more about it. I can send you our market report. We just rolled out our Q1 market report. Um, so I'd love to stay in touch with you about Houston just in case that ever comes up. Right? So then, too, if you're being requested, that's even better for you as an agent. And that's all. I have a couple. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Referrals. Couple friendly reminders on. So we'll go back to that. So everyone remembers what that line is. Um, I've been here. I, I went to Serva recently. So that was in Napa, California. So it was really, really pretty and wonderful. Lots of education going on. Um, but basically, that was for our server conference. That's one of our um, our big third-party relocation <coughs> clients. And so with that, we hear from what's going on in other markets. And a lot of people are being um, tasked with these double referral fees. So what's happening is there's tons of companies out there that are sending agents directly emails saying, hey, we've got leads in your area. We've got somebody for you. And agents just, you know, to accept this lead, click here, right? So some agents are getting really excited. They want this lead and they're clicking here without reading the whole thing and obligating themselves to a referral fee. The Martha Turner Sotheby's referral policy is that either myself or a sales manager are the only people who are allowed to um, authorize referrals to go out on behalf of the company, right? So anything that's paid out to any third party entity that comes off the top, that has to come through the manager so that we can approve it. Um, so if an agent clicks on that, and then for example, they're also, you know, there's the client's excited, they're going through all these different systems, click, 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 click but they're actually going through a corporate relocation through their company and then it comes through it like a, a wiper or a serva or a cardis and they also are collecting those fees. That first source that the realtor um, agreed to, they hold on to those. And so there are situations where other brokers have had to pay double referral fees because right. the agents are just clicking away saying, yeah, send me the client. So if you get something like that, it could be, you know, it could be a good opportunity, but give us a call first so that we can look together with you, we can contact the referral source, we can you know, kind of set the boundaries of what these referrals are gonna be because we definitely don't want you as agents agreeing to pay something without our knowledge and then us having to, to deal with it afterwards if it does come <coughs> in a double referral sense. They can call y'all anytime. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. So we've got four people who sit in our office that all our phone lines ring together and then also you can reach me at any time on my phone. Um, and then just to let you know, too, our agent lead business development program, that was the four-week program that we put together. Um, we rolled out to the agents to talk about their sphere and how can we come in and assist you with going after some of these larger um, accounts was highly successful. So we're going to roll it out again in June. So stay tuned if that's something we have um, been just very, very busy going with agents on appointments because you all have really valuable contacts, right? And you have to have the invitation, you have to have the relationship to have the door open for us to go in and to be able to sell a program that's benefiting you as agents, right? So I highly encourage you again to think about your sphere, um, come and talk to us, and then we will put together put together this program and it'll come back in June. Does anyone have any questions? Does, anybody, does everybody understand what she's saying? That's about the program. No, 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 about the program. You know, because she's really had luck in getting huge clients through agents thinking outside the box. Oh, you know, my friend works in HR in ABC Dog Food Company, and just didn't even think about it. You know, and they call H E B uh, ABC Dog Food Company, and guess what? They're a uh, you know hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand employees. 100,000 employees and they move constantly. And so guess who gets all those referrals? It's the agent who introduced her to ABC Dog Food Company. And so if y'all just think outside the box, who works where? Who of your friends works where? Well, Houston's a thriving economy. We're right. always hearing how many jobs that we're bringing into the market, how many people that we're bringing in. And so really the big um, sealer of the deal is new hires. And mm -hmm. so they don't have any benefits. 
they get nothing other than a job, which is great, but they don't have, they don't know what is the difference between Edo or Memorial or Spring Branch. I mean, they can find something, all of those same price ranges, but they don't understand the difference and they're feeling overwhelmed because they're about to start a new job. This is a new chapter in their life. So basically what we do with these HR um, people, it's normally head, you know, head of talent acquisition, head recruiter, head of this, head of that. Um, it's in the human resources department. We go in and say that we are a service to you. We're a service to your company. You can trust us that we're going to have an agent that's going to show them around, make them feel comfortable so that when they start on their first day of work with you and that company, that they're going to have all of their personal life, all of their home life taken care of. They're going to feel calm. They're going to know what they can afford with the salary that you've presented them. And they're going to show up happy to work. And it, it's more of a, a um, helping us help the recruiters seal the deal for these people to accept, accept the Imagine documents. coming into Houston. You know, oh my God, I, I can't even imagine it. You know, yeah, well, you aware. got this friend telling you, well, live in the woodlands, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> live in the Bay Area, you can have a dock outside your back door. Live in Bridgeland and Cypress, all the schools are A+. Plus. Live in Spring Branch, you're right next to downtown. I think it, it's just overwhelming. But think outside the box. Yes, ma'am. Can I brag on Tess? I don't know if y'all thought about this, but I was getting a new listing, and Robin had already helped me a little bit, and I mentioned it to Tess, who's moving in. And she said, I'll come preview it. Can I do it tomorrow? And she looked at it from a real love point. You know, she gave me a couple little pointers and called a few people. I never thought to have her actually come preview the new listing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it gave us reasons again to reach back out to those clients saying, hey, we've got something that's just coming on for you. So thank you for inviting me. Thank you for inviting me. Perfect. Anybody else have any questions? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Cameron, don't forget to come talk to Martha. I already, I already okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Don. Can I mention this? Not supposed to, but You're Thursday to night we're having a meet and greet for mayoral candidate. Bill King, if you've run into a pothole recently, I would like to invite you to come and hear <laughs> him. And please don't forget to RSVP. Thank you. Y'all have a terrific day. Congratulations again to Seiko. If you go to Jenny, tell Jenny congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great, great day. Bye, everybody. Oh, bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye.